What I had at the time, I guess, yeah, the worst thing would be the loss of a limb. She said, I'm, I'm sorry to say, um, she'd least passed away. Um, What pissed me, the superficial minor inflection that you just ignore, can, can kill someone within six to eight hours. Lee contracted it from having a tooth abscess. People don't know what it is. People haven't heard of it. They might have heard of the flesh-eating bug, but they don't know what it means. They don't know the symptoms. They don't know what to look for. There's nothing you can do to stop it, but that you can help it. But people don't know. People don't know what it is. Necrotizing fasciitis is a condition in which tissues become infected and it's characterized by a rapid spread of the infection with bacteria or products of bacteria which damage and kill tissue. Before I lost Lee, I had not heard of necrotizing fasciitis. Uh, I'd heard of gangrene. Um, that is the name that an awful lot of people know. Uh, but not necrotizing fasciitis, no. In the 1990s, the late 90s, there were a lot of cases in media and it was very sensationalised. It was just flesh-eating bacteria and it had been headlines on some newspapers. So I had heard of it, but I didn't really know what it was all about. Vicky, one of my first ladies that contacted me, she was, she'd suffered NF from having um, a C-section in hospital. It was April 1998, um, I'd gone into labour with my first son, my waters had broken two weeks early. I had contractions on and off all day, they weren't sustaining awfully well so they had to up the level of the drip in order for me to contract. But what they didn't realise at the time is the baby was spine to spine, so instead of his back being at the front, his back was level with my spine which meant it was very difficult for him to be delivered by himself and he got stuck. It's certainly the case that healthy people can catch necrotizing fasciitis, anyone can. It tends to be more common in people who have some form of deficiency in their resistance to disease, such as uh, people with uh, 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 alcoholics or people on steroids or people with uh, chronic diseases or perhaps pregnant women. But it's certainly the case that perfectly healthy people can contract the bug that can become a form of necrotizing fasciitis, yes. Because of the length of time since my waters had broken, by this time it was over 48 hours, they took him off to special care and gave him intravenous antibiotics for the first 48 hours after he was born. The hospital protocol stated that I should have had um, intravenous antibiotics, but for some reason I didn't get them. There's a whole range of antibiotics available. And a particular antibiotic one would use would depend upon the particular bug that's causing the problem. The problem is you don't know that for 48 hours because it takes 48 hours to grow it. That's why the mainstay of treatment is, is aggressive, radical and extensive surgical debridement. Monday morning um, I had another doctor come to see me um, and then Tuesday again a third doctor came to see me. This one is the one that saved my life. The consequences of delayed or non-diagnosis can be very serious. Patients can die. The later it's diagnosed, the more difficult it is to treat. And so possibly patients can die, they can certainly develop severe systemic problems. Wednesday morning I got up, I went to walk to the breakfast room and I got stuck. I really couldn't put one foot in front of the other. It was so, so painful. And I just thought I was being a wuss. You know, I'd not had a baby before. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was normal, what wasn't normal. So they got the physiotherapist to come and see me and they got the consultant to come and see me. And by this time, there was things looking particularly wrong. I was very red. There was a lot of swelling, uh, still in a huge amount of pain. Couldn't literally abduct my legs properly. I, I came across some literature which suggests it can spread by three centimetres an hour. So it's very quick. To, it's very important to catch it quickly. On the Thursday, um, again, still in a huge amount of pain. The swelling was getting bigger. The skin was very red. Um, 
so um, that they again sort of had the physio trying to help me get the stairs. They wanted me to go home. I was just in no state to go home. By this point, I've started to sweat profusely to the point that my hair was sopping wet. My night clothes were soaking wet. I was sort of fluctuating in and out of sleep. It is difficult to recognise, but one has to maintain a very high index of suspicion. Um, and, it's, and if you go on the clinical signs, you can pick it up, which means uh, examining the patients very carefully, taking a careful history and monitoring them on an often half hourly or hourly basis. They finally took me into a communal ward where they had a doctor come to put a cannula in to give me intravenous antibiotics. He really struggled finding a vein. At this point, I was really quite sick. And one of the things that happens is all your veins collapse. So it took this doctor 12 attempts to cite a cannula, um, by which time I was getting quite stroppy. There isn't a vast literature on NF. There aren't a vast number of cases. I suspect, I, I read somewhere that in the States, about a thousand cases a year. And that's probably an underdiagnosis. The mortality, if not treated, 70, 80%, maybe even higher. It's a very serious condition. So he took me down to theatre that night for the first time and he managed to get most of the dead flesh on his first surgery but at that point I was so sick my organs started to shut down and so he had to bring me around from the anaesthetic, send me back to my room. He arranged a blood transfusion and he changed the intravenous antibiotics to three different ones, very strong antibiotics. and. The blood transfusion sort of buoyed me up enough to go through the next lot of surgery. Um, most of that particular week I am quite vague because I don't really remember a huge amount of it. I remember strange hallucinations, I remember out-of-body experiences, um, which some people believe and don't believe, but they were very, very real to me. Bridal, I believe, is a French term, and it means to remove all damaged or dead tissue, and essentially the surgeon cuts out any tissue which appears to be non-viable, not, not, not living or infected. It's a mainstay of surgical treatment of any form of infection. And it can begin with a fairly simple question of just cutting away superficially dead tissue it may result in an amputation of a hole in. The second operation, I woke up in the recovery room. I really remember waking up that day and I was howling with pain and he was absolutely ecstatic to be honest because he knew then that he'd got all the dead flesh so they brought me back up to the room and from then on really it was a matter of wound care antibiotics for four months um, I stayed in the hospital for another couple of weeks after that and uh, went back to my mum's for a couple of weeks and then finally when Liam was six weeks old I went home so. the main impact I think was the fear of infection again and I was fastidious to a point with sort of hygiene for myself and for my son. Anybody came to see that him I'd make them wash their hands before they touched him. Um, cuts and grazes, even to this day I'm paranoid about cuts and grazes. You know, wash it, cover it, keep an eye on it if it sort of starts to get red or swells up, get it looked at. So I guess it's knowledge on that front that you want to impart that knowledge to other people without scaring them to be on the lookout for anything that looks a little bit unusual that isn't healing the way it should and it doesn't matter how long ago it was it still sticks in your head it doesn't go away it must have a devastating effect on patients mentally because they've gone through not only pregnancy but a severe systemic infection and a surgical operation so it must have some profound post-operative mental effect but it is recoverable, it is treatable, and patients can lead a normal life afterwards. I'm lucky in a way in the fact that where mine was, nobody knows. Unless I tell them, nobody knows. People are left with huge disfigurement on arms and legs and so on, but I'm lucky because my scars are invisible to anybody but myself and my husband. I'm really, really lucky. I believe there is an awareness of necrotizing fasciitis among my colleagues because we're all aware of the devastating consequences of missing it and that's something that we all worry about. So there's a very high index of suspicion. So I think there is, there is a high index of awareness among my colleagues, yes. We need somebody to help us raise awareness 
for doctors to sit up and take notice that prompt diagnosis is what saves lives. Raising awareness of NF, it's just got to continue until we can save some lives. Everyone said there is a need for a support group. I'm really embarrassed that there isn't a support group. So I thought, right, that's, that's got to be my aim now. So, um, which sort of, I was in shock for weeks and weeks, but I did have this yearn to support people. It is rare disease. We don't see it very often, but the consequences of missing it or not treating it properly are so devastating that it must be a source of anxiety to anyone who, who may have it. But all I'd say is any medic out there, if you've seen necrotizing fasciitis once, you'll recognise it again. So if you find a case, just get as many medics as you can to look and see and understand and learn. And yeah, mistakes happen sometimes, but learn from them. You really need to learn from them and take into consideration that we're, we're people at the end of the day and we all want to live. We all want to survive. I'm just so glad I, I can do it. There are a lot of survivors and bereaved have said to me, Dorian, I don't know how you do it, because I couldn't do it. You know, or I could do it for six months while it's in my system, and then that'd be it. But I'll do it because I just feel sorry for everyone that has experienced NF. Say